Hello all, welcome to today's lecture on aquatic ecosystems. Now we have been discussing about the components of the various ecosystems around the world and in the previous lecture we looked at terrestrial ecosystems. Now the requirements of organisms in an aquatic ecosystem are same like that of a terrestrial ecosystem but the difference here is that the important components like carbon dioxide or oxygen are not present in the gaseous form of atmosphere instead they are dissolved in the water. Along with that, the difference between terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems is that aquatic ecosystems see a lot of variation in depth, light that is penetrating the water body, the temperature of the water body not only during day and night but also in the different seasons the temperatures differs with the depth the temperature will differ. Along with that, in ecosystems, aquatic ecosystems which are really deep, there is a lot of pressure factor also that comes into play. Salinity is another factor that is involved and the amount of dissolved oxygen concentration. So all of these factors are abiotic that are important in an aquatic ecosystem. Those are the depth, light penetration, temperature, pressure, salinity and oxygen concentration. So for each of the aquatic systems that we talk about, we will be looking at the other abiotic and biotic components but these factors what I have mentioned remain the same. So there are two types of aquatic ecosystems namely freshwater and marine water ecosystem. Now freshwater ecosystem comprises of inorganic and organic salts or uh, organic uh, nutrients which are present not only in the dissolved form in the water but also in the soil sediments at the bottom. So in both the cases in the soil also there are a lot of nutrients from which organisms are taking it up and even in the dissolved water there are nutrients which some other type of organisms are using. The biotic components in freshwater ecosystem include producers such as the submerged and free floating plants. Not only do you find submerged and free floating plants, you can also find amphibious plants which are able to survive in varying water levels. Along with that, the major type of the producers which is found in any water body is the phytoplanktons. Phytoplanktons are usually found floating on the water body and these are microscopic algae or microscopic producers which are able to do photosynthesis. The biotic components other than producers include the consumers and decomposers. So the consumers are of three types. We have primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. Primary consumers mainly are the zooplanktons that includes protozoans, small crustaceans, rotifers, all of these microscopic organisms which feed on phytoplanktons are called as the zooplanktons. The secondary consumers are the insects or the fishes which feed on the zooplanktons and the tertiary consumers are the larger fishes in case of a freshwater body it mainly involves eels, Droughts. There can be even certain birds which are feeding on the water body, or, um, feeding on the secondary consumers or the primary consumers in the water body. So these are the, the three different types of consumers found in freshwater ecosystems. Decomposers, as usual, are including the microorganisms and other detritivores like the worms. So all of these are the biotic components of a freshwater ecosystem. Now the freshwater ecosystem can be either the lentic type or the lotic type. Lentic type of ecosystem is a still water ecosystem or a stagnant water ecosystem. For example, a pond or a swamp or a lake that is called as a lentic ecosystem. A lotic ecosystem on the other hand is a flowing water ecosystem. An easy way to remember this is lentic lakes that is a still water, lotic flowing, flow low. If you remember this terminology, this connection, you will be able to recall what is a lentic and a lotic ecosystem. So lotic ecosystem includes the rivers, the streams, the waterfalls, anywhere where the water is flowing is called as a lotic ecosystem. We also have certain other terminologies that are associated with the freshwater ecosystem that is the littoral zone. Now lakes are generally deeper than ponds because ponds are shallow water bodies. So they will only have a small layer and that uh, the, the entire water body, the entire pond is being penetrated by light. So you can say that the entire pond is having a photic zone. Photic zone is a zone. You can um, see the spelling over here. Photic zone is the zone which is receiving light in a water body. Now in a pond or in a shallow pool, the entire water body will receive the light because it's not very deep. So the entire body is a having photic zone. But lakes on the other hand are much deeper water bodies and hence they show distinct zones. 
the first one being littoral zone littoral zone is the shallow water zone as you can see over here littoral zone is the shallow water zone which is present near the shore the other zone is limnetic zone limnetic zone is the open water zone the open water zone is called as the limnetic zone where you can see penetration of light in varying degrees in the limnetic zone we also have profundal zone now profundal zone is wherein there is the deep water zone where there is negligible light penetration that is called as the profundal zone so you can see here the zones have been divided based on the light penetration those are littoral the shallow water zone which is present near the shore and which will receive light abundantly limnetic zone is the open water zone which is having effective penetration of light but the penetration of light is varying the, there is varying degrees of penetration in the limnetic zone so in the limnetic zone we have photic zone where there is good penetration of light and profundal zone where there is negligible light penetration we also have division of the water body based on the temperature stratification so based on the temperature in the water body we can divide the water body as having epilimnion and hypolimnion epilimnion is the area of water body which is receiving or which has a higher temperature in comparison to the hypolimnion which has a much lower temperature so hypo is always below epi is always the a prefix that is used for surface so epilimnion is the layer on top which has a high temperature whereas hypolimnion is the layer which is having a lower temperature and the zone of water body that divides these two that you you can call it as the border or the line which is dividing these two is called as the thermocline thermocline is the boundary above which the temperature is much higher and is called as the epilimnion below which the temperature is much lower and even the variation in temperature temperature is much lower that is called as the hypolimnion so these are a few terminologies associated with fresh water ecosystem the other type of ecosystem that we have in case of aquatic ecosystem is the marine water ecosystem now 70% of the earth surface is covered with marine water and most of the marine water is at a temperature of 2 to 3 degrees celsius not the one that you see on top but below that is there is a huge layer of water body that we are not able to see and most of it is at a low temperature not only that the amount of light penetration in marine water systems is much much lesser than fresh water systems the reason being they are much more deeper so the temperature is low there is no light penetration or you can say less light penetration in the lower layers and 62% of the marine water body is under very high pressure that means the organisms which are living in these water bodies need to have adaptations to suit all of these characteristics that is very high pressure very low temperature and they no light according to these we have different types of organisms that are seen in a marine water ecosystem so the important terminologies to remember for a marine water ecosystem are neritic zone now neritic zone is the shallow marine water zone so the shallow marine water environment or the shallow marine water zone which is corresponding to the continental shelf is called as the neritic zone the second terminology is photic zone again like a freshwater ecosystem photic zone is the zone which receives ample amount of light so that is called as photic zone the zone which receives less or minimal light or negligible light is called as the aphotic zone the pelagic zone is the open ocean you can see over here pelagic zone is the open ocean what you see over here is the pelagic zone that is the open ocean and the benthic zone is the sediments at the sea floor so we have organisms that are able to live in the benthic zone we have organisms that are freely moving in the pelagic zone so there are different terminologies based on the zonation the amount of light penetration the, we have different terminologies that is the neritic zone which is the zone that is corresponding to the continental shelf continental shelf is the uh, the area which is there between the shoreline and the shelf break there is not much slope there then we have photic zone which receives ample amount of light aphotic zone which receives negligible or no light pelagic zone which is the open ocean and benthic zone which is the sea floor or the bottom of the ocean now in these zones there are different types of organisms so the abiotic factor mainly here is the high salt concentration that is one of the key characteristics or unique characteristics of a marine water ecosystem along with that we need to remember that there are there is uh, the dissolved nutrients are very less 
and like I already told you previously, you, we need to know about the light and the pressure as well. Those are all the abiotic factors. The biotic factors include the producers. Now, producers are mainly phytoplankton. So, we have diatoms as the major phytoplankton found in a marine water ecosystem. We also have several seaweeds which are floating or which could be benthic, that is which are found on the ocean floor. Along with that, there are several submerged plants as well. The consumers include zooplanktons such as crustaceans or foraminiferans or mollusks. There are also barnacles. So, the different types of organisms which form the primary consumers are written over here. We also have secondary consumers such as uh, carnivorous fishes. Those include the seals, there are uh, corals, squids, crabs, lobsters, smaller whale varieties. All of these include the secondary consumers. And the Tertiary consumers are the much larger animals like the killer whales, the sharks, sea lion, codfish, jellyfish. All of these are included under the tertiary consumers. Decomposers are the several different types of microorganisms that are found in the marine water ecosystem. So, this is just to show you the different types of consumers that are found in a marine water ecosystem. This is krill and this is co copepod. These two are examples of crustaceans which are forming the primary consumer. This is crayfish. Crayfish could be either a primary or a secondary consumer. So, it is having a varying habitat, a varying nutrition mode. We have crabs, lobsters. These are all included under the um, secondary consumers. We also have sea lion, jellyfish, codfish. All of these are comprising the tertiary consumers. The third type of ecosystem that is found in the aquatic zones is an estuarine ecosystem. Now, estuarine ecosystem or an estuary is usually found at the tidal mouth of a large river, basically where the tide of the oceans is meeting the stream, that area where they are mixing up, that is called as an estuary or an estuarine ecosystem and usually it contains brackish water, that is the salinity is more than fresh water but less than marine water, basically because there is a mix of the two ecosystems. Now, because there is a mix of fresh water with marine water, the nutrients is very, very high. So, the it has a very good load of nutrients and you are there is varied salinity because it depends on the time of the day. It depends on how much of fresh water and saline water are mixing. It is differing based on the water column, based on the sediment. So, all of these regions are having very high nutrients and because of which, E estuarine ecosystems are one of the most productive habitats in the world. In India, there are several areas which have many estuaries. Wherever there is a mix of coastal ecosystem with the freshwater ecosystem, estuaries are predominant. So, the biotic factors in an estuarine ecosystem mainly include marsh grasses, seaweeds, mangrove vegetation as shown in the background and even phytoplanktons. The consumers are mainly oysters. Oysters are very, very common in an estuarine ecosystem. Along with that, we can find different types of fishes, crabs and shrimp. And the decomposers include the microorganisms. So, these are the different abiotic and biotic habitats or biotic components of different aquatic ecosystems. Mainly the freshwater ecosystem, the marine water ecosystem and the estuarine ecosystem. I hope this class was useful to you. Thank you.